we're going over three dynamic camera moves from the 1990s Ninja Turtles. First, a fast forward handheld shot. Second, a rolling dolly shot with a gut punch at the end. And third, a common fight scene camera move taken to a new level, all to liven up Ninja Turtles. And we also got a puzzle at the end so you too can practice acting and thinking like a director. Come on, let's dive in. I guess in the 1990s, a lot of filmmakers were playing around with fast forwarding through footage. Uh, I really don't have anything to offer you guys except for a frozen pizza. <laughs> let's go for it! And they did this in Adam's Family Values. Welcome to my home. And the Ninja Turtles, the Mutant Ninja Turtles, are coming back to their sewer home to find out it's been ransacked. Splinter has been kidnapped. And what happens is, is we focus in on the emotions of Raphael. And what it is, is it's a handheld shot, which adds to the feeling of emotional discontent. And, and it's on Raphael and it goes around him. It's as if the despair surrounds him. And while we spend time with it, it emphasizes the feeling. And as it goes around him, his emotions build up. He gets more and more upset. And as he gets more and more upset, the handheld shot starts to be fast forwarded through. <laughs> and what that does, because it's handheld, it gets even more handheld. It feels even shakier and shakier. Is it speeds up and he's reaching a climax. Not with a camera move or a dolly in, but with the fast forwarding. And as his emotions are building up louder, more and more, we fast forward more and more, and then we come to him at the end, and we push in on his mouth as he starts to yell. And when he starts to yell, that is the uh, climax of the moment. And so there's all this anger and upsetness, and it's got to go somewhere. And so what they do is, uh, the director shows it's a push out. So it releases the tension. It gets wider and wider, so the intensity of the emotion is dissipating, and there's the anger isn't gonna go anywhere, isn't going to create anything happening immediately. And so it dollies out, and then they and then the voice of itself gets quieter and quieter. And then the old man passes by and he looks down and there's a joke. So what's really interesting about this shot is I've seen a fast forwarding shot in Adam's Family Values. And um, what it is is it, it kind of added an eerie feeling to it, so completely different. But in this case, it's, it's, it's talking. I thought you couldn't be talking in a fast forwarding shot without making it a little bit odd. But here, with the Ninja Turtles being completely dubbed over anyway, they felt like they could take some more creative leeway, I think. And so what they ended up doing is, uh, they, they ADR'd his voice just like they did with any other part of the movie. And it was a yell, so his lips weren't moving. That yell is fine. So you can do uh, voices over in a fast forwarded shot if you wanted to get that feeling. And you just gotta make sure that the words that you're saying, or if it's a yell preferably, are something that can be dubbed over. Now, April's objective throughout the movie is to report on the Foot Clan, the crime syndicate that's plaguing the city. Garden variety subway mugging. Exactly, June. I'm Boy, convinced she's a that good reporter. She's a babe. And that's what the scene and shot is about. She's reporting on the news, she's reporting on the crime syndicate. And what we don't do is, we don't cut to the outside of the world watching our news. We wanna stay, the director wants us to stay here in this scene. For a couple reasons, there's a reveal, the gut punch at the end, and then also because we don't want to see her having success too much out in the world because there's so many obstacles and challenges she's got to face for everybody to face for them to win at the end. And so what happens is, is as we're moving across the scene, we're getting a whole bunch of cuts between these different shots and different angles in the movie. Really interesting stuff. She's reporting confidently and strong and we feel like we're getting progress and momentum in our direction. I've been speaking with a lot of Japanese Americans in the past few days who say that our recent crime wave is reminiscent of a secret band of ninja thieves. There's this building emotion and excitement. And then what happens is that stops. Who once operated in Japan. Are the police looking into this? Her boss in this window, he's bright. Our eyes are drawn to him. He's in blue light. 
different from the light inside the room. The light is more orange and he's more uh, blue light inside in, the, in there. And so our eyes are drawn to him and he's watching April and we know what he's we know what he's thinking. We know we think he's thinking that he's he's got to stop her from saying the things that he has. He's being pressured by the police chief. And what's great is, and this angle here is, we're not really seeing uh, 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 April's face very much. We're kind of looking at her from the side, you know, and that's not great because we want to. That's not exactly what they wanted. So they put a monitor right in behind her. That's a close up of her. So it's kind of like a close up of April, and then her boss and they're kind of facing off in a two shot all of they did this all in an artfully placed one shot really well done and i think it's great like you can take a look back at the shot and see all the interesting things they did a zoom out from a close-up they cut to two mediums then they by cutting off people so you could only see one person at a time and then and then they did they pulled to a wide for the reveal and the gut punch at the end of the stopping of the boss's reaction and coming challenges they're going to be facing. All right, so if you're prepping a fight scene, you're gonna to wanna to listen up to this because this camera move is ever so subtle and it's used sprinkled throughout a lot of fight scenes. So basically, when there's a fight or a punch, a kick, a roll, and something where there's a lot of energy in that movement, sometimes what happens is the camera moves ever so slightly as if the energy of that hit was, was pushing the camera in a different direction. And so that's what's happening in this shot. But before we get to the shot that's happening, in, I want to talk about what's going on in this scene, the sequence, so you understand why they're doing it. So basically what happens is uh, there is Raphael. He's outnumbered. He's getting his butt kicked by all these ninjas. And so there, there, the audience are starting to feel sorry for him and know that he's not going to win this fight. And then we cut to, we've been cutting to these other three Ninja Turtles and April. And they're having a nice conversation, completely ignorant of what's happening, um, completely ignorant of the danger and their friend getting hurt. And so what there is, there's this tension. We talk about tension a lot in film and how to create it. And that's what they've done here is the audience knows something the characters don't and the audience wishes the characters oh so desperately, please get off your butts and help Raphael. And there are these cuts. And it's almost as if there are these jokes between these two scenes. <laughs> It's almost out there, they're on the edge of understanding something. Ready? That there, there's some similarity between the two uh, scenes that they're making light of. In our shot, what happens is the ninja pulls back his fist, he's ready to punch, and we expect him to throw the punch to hit Raphael. And what happens is the filmmaker turns our expectations on the head, on its head, and cuts. And we cut to the ninjas, the other three of the ninjas and the camera moves as if it felt the punch in the other shot. And that is, that is a camera move that takes that whole idea of punches and kicks moving the camera to a whole new level. It's inching in on that other scene. Now it's great. You've been watching shots from other film directors and how they thought through things, how they made things happen. That's gonna help you figure out your own shots if you're internalizing that. But I wanna take this moment to give a shot that I haven't analyzed and let you look at it and comment about it in the comment section. So it's not just me telling you what they're thinking, but it's also you thinking about it and you getting in your head what's going on. So why don't you guys take a look and tell me what you want, what you think in the comments section. That will minimize response time while maximizing coordination between patrol units in a decentralized networking scheme. All right, guys, thanks for watching my channel, my video. I hope you enjoyed. I want you to think like a director. What's great about this is, is we're watching other things. You can take shots, take camera moves, take ideas from other directors, and then twist them around, shake them, jam them together with other ideas, and you've got your own interesting shots that make up a great film. So do that on your own, guys. All right, so thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications so you know more, and comment. We want to create a community of filmmakers talking with shots. Wouldn't that be cool if we were all talking about how? Uh, that'd just be awesome. Uh, okay, so like, subscribe, hit notifications, comment. Let's get talking.